One year ago, we picked up this little Ford Aden, and it has been serving us well on our little hobby farm. Now it's time to restore it to the dignity it deserves, just as if it had rolled off the assembly line. Of course, I've got to thank my wife, who, despite having this face on most of the time, supported all the hours in here, in what developed into a big project starting here. And I love how quickly and easily things are coming off of this. And somehow ending up here. I have no idea how many hours I'm in now. I'm spending about two hours every night on this. So let's get started on this mostly great adventure. Day one is done, and today was about pulling off all the big fun stuff. Seat, hood, fenders, grill, footrests. Here on out, it's going to get a little bit more detail oriented. So here's what I run into with every project. It starts out as a simple, I'm just going to repaint this real quick thing. And then it rapidly turns into a, well, while we're there, we might as well take off this one more part. Everywhere that I know there's a nook, I want to take apart so that I can paint it truly the right way. So a little project becomes a very big project. This battery box is completely shot and we've got some terrible rust through on it. I've cut out the worst parts and I'm going to fabricate new bottoms and sides for it, but I'm still trying to retain some parts that can't be replaced. For example, this little patent placard on the back. Of course, it's always the silly little things that take forever. In this case, it's the three tiny bolts that hold on the throttle detent plate. The end of evening two and a half, another four hours into this. Now I have to start making decisions about what's going to stay and what's going to go. Here's some of my reasoning. This fan is actually going to stay on, in large part because I'm starting to realize how many parts I have off, and that's going to be a lot of parts hanging in my paint booth. And this is a good place to hang it, while I should still be able to paint everything behind it just fine. The steering column I could probably go either way on, so I'll probably leave it on for the same reasons. But back here, on the draft control spring, I don't see a good way of getting paint in underneath that without removing it. And a similar thing with a position control lever module. And unfortunately, I'm not having any luck removing these, so it looks like we'll end up pulling the entire pump cover off. Here's a trick from the experienced guys. Spray everything real good with a cheap oven cleaner, let it sit, and then pressure wash it off. Yeah, I was skeptical. So here's how nicely the oven cleaner and pressure washer strip the paint off. There are still some areas that have some crusties that I need to take off, plus it got a lot of flash rust over it over here too. So we've still got some work to do. While I'm at it, let's discuss a couple of my favorite tools for this project. First up is my needle scaler. This is a new tool for me. It's a pneumatic tool and it has a bunch of these little metal fingers and all of them vibrate and tap like little tiny hammers along the surface. This works great for pushing off rust scale, heavy grease and dirt deposits, but it doesn't work great at stripping paint and it leaves little ping marks in the surface. So for stripping paint, I prefer the flap wheel and I put that on a grinder. Here's what it looks like new, but as you can see, it wears away pretty well. And the point of that is as it wears away, it's continually exposing new fresh grit sandpaper. This is mainly what I'm using to strip a lot of these surfaces. For most automotive restorations, I'm using a much finer grit sandpaper, and that's probably what we'll hit most of the hood with. Back to the grinder, when it comes to cleaning up a lot of these rust, especially in the natural kind of pitted casting, I'm looking forward to using this wire wheel. We're still a couple days away from painting, but I just shot it all with a rust converter. The purpose is to chemically change that rust in there to something that's a little more inert and shouldn't cause more rust underneath that epoxy primer. So we're getting the hood stripped. I've got a couple dings here and there to fill, but mostly it's coming along nicely. But we are encountering one nasty bit of an issue right here, a uh, complete rust through that's fairly common on these. So we'll cut this out and make a new patch panel and weld it in. That's part of why we take this down to the metal, to make sure nothing like that is hiding underneath. This is mostly just a cosmetic restoration. The thing runs great, the hydraulics are working fine. We replaced the water pump earlier this year. I grabbed it off. You did? I'm painting the tractor. Still, I found about $150 worth of parts to put on, and most of those parts are going into that steering gear box with bushings and bearings because we've got a lot of wobble with that front right wheel, and we're going to take it out. So we're just going to drive these steel bushings out and get the new ones in. Next up is re-bushing where the spindle fits into the axle extension here, 
and it looks like I'm not the first one who's done this. The easiest way to do this is just drive the new ones in, pushing the old ones into the dead space in the middle. There are already four in there, and that middle section is taken up. Now, even with the four of them in there, the top one has already slid in much too far. But for the bottom of it, we are going to have to remove it, so we're just folding it in on itself, and then I'll yank it out of there. Why are you doing that? See the, this? It's supposed to be a ball, and it's supposed to be able to roll. So we bought a new ball. I am tired and filthy, but I am ready to paint. But at this point, I've got to admit that I have failed my primary objective, and that was to have a tractor that matched exactly what it would have looked like and felt like to go sit on this tractor in 1948. So what happened? Well, as I understand, this tractor would have been painted after all the major components had been assembled. And from what I hear, that included most of these parts being on the tractor. I tried, but I just can't handle the thought of doing it that way when I could have done it a little bit better. And so, despite my desire to have this thing be period perfect, we're gonna deviate in these paint protocols and in a few other ways. The paint is hopefully going to be stronger, better, and longer lasting than the original. I'm gonna leave the gear shift and the three-point handles unpainted since the paint is just gonna get rubbed off of those pretty quick anyway. Otherwise, we'll try to keep every part according to its original color. Now I just finished this manure spreader in the spring. You can check out that video here. And to do it, I went the super cheap route, the local Alkid enamel that was available at the tractor supply company. The color is great, the gloss is great, the coverage was even good. And I really liked it, but I'm especially concerned about the durability on this. I can do some tricks to make this a little bit more durable, including adding a hardener, which I did. And I'm noticing that my green is even starting to dull a little bit. And from a lot of what I've read, that's kind of the story of alkyd enamels, no matter how nice they are. The technology just isn't there for extreme durability. At the other end of the spectrum are the automotive urethanes, and that's what I'm used to spraying on my cars. I have a couple concerns because the clear coat might just be a little bit too glossy. I still want this to look like a tractor from the 50s. Then there's the cost, pricing out around five to $700. I decided to finally just bite the bullet, go with the automotive single-stage urethane, and went to my local Napa. Mike, the owner, loves painting, and he was really excited to tell me about something he had just tried. This is called the Valspar Industrial Line Enamel. It's a urethane enamel and is sort of a somewhere in between both of these. It is a lot less expensive than the automotive urethanes I was looking at. So out the door with stuff with a gallon of epoxy primer and its hardeners and mixing chemicals, plus two quarts of gray and two quarts of red with their associated hardeners, and I'm only out $250 on them. There are a couple things I'm really ashamed of. This is one of them. It looked so good with that gloss paint going on that I got a little carried away and I got runs all over it. So what are we gonna do about that? We are going to take a brand new razor blade and very, very carefully scrape with this razor perfectly flat over that. At first it'll look like this right here, starting to just dull out the top of that. And I might even have to slice off some of the drip. Eventually it completely levels out with the surface. And the end result of a good buffing you can see here, it mostly takes away the whole thing. And so it's almost good enough. But I'm not happy enough with how this came out, so we're actually gonna sand the whole thing and shoot this again. Originally, quite a lot of these parts were silver cadmium plated or zinc plated, and we're going to replicate that with this aluminum spray paint. So now we'll mix an extremely light coat of urethane clear coat over my spray paint. This is not recommended. We'll see if it lasts. Clear coat isn't made for things to be rubbing on it, and on the throttle plate I had concerns that that detent ball would cause problems. So we did a tape roll, which is an excellent way of blending where you have a full coat to where you have no coat. It helps to dither out the edge there. This is one of the first gray parts going on, and boy does it look good against that red. Now it's time to get the wiring back in. And in this case, I couldn't spring for a new harness when my old one was working fine. And the old one is pretty ratty looking. With that and the addition of new lights, I needed to find a way to really clean up our wiring while maintaining a fairly original look. What I came up with is this, the super cheap nylon stuff through some computer stores online. And it's super easy to put on because it compresses and widens up. It's fairly heat tolerant, but we're gonna have to keep it away from the really hot parts. But I do like that it gives me a much cleaner look 
while still looking like I've got a fabric loom. More parts on order and another $150 in new brake shoes because the old axle seal was leaking so they were soaked in oil and the pads were getting a little thin. Like, there was no pad left. One last hurdle to get over here. The old steering wheel is badly cracked and shedding, so I did purchase a new one, but this one has a keyed slot where the steering shaft is splined. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to cut out the center of this and replace it with the old center. I admit this is really stressful. I'm hoping I'm not about to deeply regret what I have done. Another thing I'm after with this project is to minimize purchases. Now we have had to purchase a lot of wear components like bushings, but elsewhere what's there is really solid and I'm just trying to renew it. Take this for an example, a super grungy original cable. With 30 seconds on the wire wheel, the ends came out really nice. We sheathed that again in that little nylon weave and then wrapped the ends down with some non-tarnishing wire. I'm kind of getting to the point where I'm ready for this to start closing down. I mean, the fact is I'm right here now shaving and buffing out paint runs on the inside of the wheel with a Dremel. Something somewhere went quite wrong. And I think it was probably about that time that I decided that the original wasn't good enough and I was gonna try to do better because that set a new challenge with everything that happened. And I don't have any excuse like, well, the original had run, so I'll let it have a run. The other issue at hand is with all my other restorations with cars, I've never been able to go all the way with them, stripping a car completely to the bare chassis. Whereas with this, it has been simple enough that I can do what I believe is a comprehensive enough repaint. And since we're doing that, I don't have any excuses to say, well, it's good enough because of the rest of the problem. Every nut has to be painted. Every wire has to be routed well, cleaned up, and in a nice loom. Every radiator hose clamp has to be positioned and repositioned just right. A lot of people do restorations that are a lot better than mine and have skills way above my level. I'm really not coming up with anything amazing here. It's just that with every step, there's something that I know I can do a little bit better. And I can't yet figure out if I love it because I'm so satisfied with how each piece looks or if I'm just starting to get tired and ready for this to come to a close. Also not original, but too good looking to resist. Moment of truth. We're happy to put our little Ford back in action. It fits so many different duties here. And when I get a little more seat time, we'll do a detailed comparison on the experience of the Farmall versus the Ford. So subscribe to keep tabs on this little tractor. This is Cozy Cow Farm! We've learned a lot over the last couple years working our mid-century hobby farm. We've grown, and so has our herd and flock but we still try to affordably increase our self-reliance while ensuring we and the kids are having fun. Every day we find there is still more to learn. So subscribe to join us on the journey.